We're here today visiting with Dr. Ralph Enlow, President of the Association for Biblical Higher Education. The Association for Biblical Higher Education is one of the key organizations that helps institutions of theological higher learning to do their job well and to also grant them the opportunity to become accredited and recognized according to standards set out by the U.S. Department of Education. And as there are lots of things swirling around in the news these days about higher education and about things Christian, it seems important to us to talk about where all of this is heading. So Dr. Enlow, as you survey the landscape around us in terms of the changes in our cultural values and the changes in government regulation, what impact will this have on institutions of theological and biblical higher education in the years to come? It's a little uh, hard to be a prophet, I guess I would say, but um, I think the consensus on our staff and our board is um, that there will be increasing um, challenges to our fidelity and integrity uh, as an organization that's committed to Christ and His Lordship and to His um, standards and uh, His holiness in the coming years. Um, we've enjoyed uh, now really over half a decade of recognition by the U.S. Department of Education as a gatekeeper agency for uh, student financial aid programs and as one of the national accreditors that uh, guarantees or validates quality of higher education, particularly in our sector of biblical higher education. I think uh, most of us believe that there will be increasing uh, regulatory uh, pressure and scrutiny on higher education in general um, that we will of course partake of and um, that's coming primarily because there's a lot of federal money invested in education and there are bad actors out there and uh, so in an attempt to try to uh, protect the public interest in uh, integrity in higher education, regulation is on the rise. Uh, we think some of it's pretty arbitrary and misguided, but uh, we recognize that it's there. And then, of course, there's the whole realm of um, freedom of conscience and religious liberty. Uh, at present, there is language in the laws that govern higher education, accreditation, recognition, that protect the religious mission of institutions. That law is up for renewal this year and we're very hopeful and we're working hard with allies to see to it that that language is upheld. Nevertheless, um, it's entirely possible that within the next few years it will be impossible for an agency like ABHE to be a federal gate gatekeeper accrediting agency uh, that is the basis on which uh, member institutions, students would be eligible for student financial aid, federal student financial aid. Um, hard to predict when that might happen. There have been some tests that have surfaced recently. So we're all watching and waiting and praying and asking the Lord for both the courage to uh, respond when the time comes, but also the integrity to be faithful mm -hmm. when the time comes. Mm -hmm. Has the ABHE board and you as its leader talked about contingency plans? In other words, where, where will you draw the line in the sand and say, we won't cross over that line? Well, we certainly have talked about contingency plans. In fact, we had a, a two-day meeting just over a year ago in which we named uh, about nine or ten uh, issues or scenarios uh, that are being talked about that could be threats to ABHE's current status or operation. And we did a little exercise where we had each person in the room rate the probability that that particular threat might actually come to fruition in the next five years 
And then secondly, their estimation of the degree to which that particular issue would uh, radically challenge ABHE's uh, mission and vision and operation and you know financial stability and membership. Um, there was a consensus that um, there are likely to be some issues within the next five years that would be disruptive to ABHE. And there was also strong consensus that um, we, we believe that uh, we will exercise whatever recourse we have to try to address any threats. But in the end, we're not going to compromise anything. We're, we're prepared to go underground even mm -hmm. uh, if it comes to that. So uh, the, probably the one that's getting the most notoriety these days is the whole uh, gender identity and sexuality uh, discussion. Uh, but also there's discussion out there about even the role of accrediting agencies relative to student financial aid. Mm -hmm. um, and there's actually draft language being circulated in Washington that would remove accrediting agencies as the gatekeepers mm -hmm. for federal student mm -hmm. financial aid. Um, and of course, uh, there's pluses and minuses about that. Uh, the bad news is that for our institutions whose students depend heavily on student financial aid, um, ABHE's ability to be the gatekeeper for that would, would go away. Uh, the other side of it is that we could focus much more on the intrinsic aspects of missional Christian higher education that has integrity and then um, that the value proposition of membership in ABHE would shift from simply being a Title IV gatekeeper agency to truly being uh, and only being a quality assurance agency that's uh, peer driven. Mm -hmm. And that raises another question that you've alluded to in the turbulence of our time and, and given the nature of government growth, shall we say, the whole role of accrediting uh, as being done by peers and peer institutions <clears throat> has come under scrutiny and under question. Mm -hmm. uh, what does that, um, I guess, bear for the future in mm -hmm. regard to the whole role of accrediting associations? Mm -hmm. Well, again, there's, there's quite a range of proposals under discussion. There are certainly voices out there that think that accreditation ought to go away as we know it. They think it's uh, really uh, completely unaccountable, that it's a good old boys club, that accrediting agencies really don't sanction institutions, they don't police themselves, there are too many um, shoddy practices, there's a devaluation of educational quality. Those are all criticisms that are leveled at accrediting agencies. Uh, and so some people in some quarters would say, let's do away with accreditation. Uh, that is nowhere near uh, at the tipping point yet, as far as I can tell. I think the what is a reality with which we have to contend now is the degree to which the federal interest in higher education is driving regulation of accrediting agencies in directions we don't want to go. Um, so that instead of being agencies that are talking about higher education quality uh, among peers that are committed to quality and integrity, uh, sometimes we end up being a little more than government policing agencies on what I would regard to be relatively trivial and marginal issues. Um, and that process seems to have been escalating over the past decade in an increasingly granular way. It is encouraging that some of the drafts that are being circulated, for example, by Senator Alexander, uh, who's the new chair of the Senate committee that oversees higher education. Uh, he's calling for quite a bit of rollback on regulations, and he's calling for the Department of Education to relinquish 
its insistence on some of these uh, rather arbitrary and marginal issues in which they have promulgated regulations that really don't have a basis in the law itself. Um, their Department of Education issues that they would construe as deriving from the law but not really uh, based in the higher education law itself. So it's in a bit of flux, I would say, and, and there's a lot at stake this year because the law is being renewed. And uh, I guess the good news is that the leadership right now in the Senate and t to some extent also in the House is of a mind probably to roll back some of the regulatory strain mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. accrediting. Mm -hmm.